Hey there, it's Elizabeth, and welcome back to a tutorial of sorts. Yes, we'll be watercoloring today. And let me just say right from the beginning, I am not a watercolorist. I really have no idea what I'm doing, but I have a lot of fun playing around. So, uh, in the past, you've seen me do these little watercolor tags, right? And in here somewhere, or right here, I did this little, it was like a cross between uh, brush pens and dot pens and, and whatnot. And then yesterday I was playing in here and I this is a photocopy of a thank you card that I had painted. Now, this I will show you how to paint. <laughs> the reason I don't show tutorials or, or whatnot on um, things like this is because I get them through inspiration from Instagram, you know, so I don't in any way want to step on anybody's toes and take their design or, or you know, whatever. I mean, in all seriousness, everyone gets their ideas from everyone else, you know, but I will show you how I did this thank you card. And I wish that I had, you know, the card, but I sent it. <laughs> it was a thank you card. So, like I said, I am not a watercolorist in any way, shape, or form. I like to have I like to have fun. I like to play. I like to do different things. I like to try a variety of things. So what you're gonna need is a paintbrush. I happen to like these. Uh, I do. Surely they are synthetic, but they're hair, right? Which is different than. Mm, let me just pick another one. Which is different than this right here, right? This is synthetic as well, but it's they're hard. And these are specifically for watercolor. So the, the brush tips are, are super soft. I'll try to find the link to them. I got them a while back. Transcend, they're called. And this is a number three. I don't know anything else about them, okay? Nothing else. I don't know what kind of tip it is, nothing. You're gonna need some fresh water, which is right here in my ball mason drawer. And I'm going to first, this, I was just starting on this, this right here because I do believe I want to make it into a card. Normally I just take the watercolor paper and I fold it in half, but then I started thinking, man, that's a waste of watercolor paper, you know? Oh, let me show you the watercolor paper I use, by the way. I use this watercolor Canson, watercolor 9x12. 140 pound, 300 G, okay? Yeah, and there are 30 sheets in this. I usually try to get them when they're on sale, or buy one, get one free. I will, however, be looking into uh, getting, whatchamacallit, getting watercolor cards and envelopes through Amazon because I really enjoy making handmade cards, you know? And once I come up with a design that I can do and do quickly and simply, that's the one I stick to. So let me just get a couple more brushes out. I don't know what happened to the other brush I had. Jeez Louise. Okay, I have these in a variety of sizes. So we're just gonna work with these two and I'll show you why in a second. Okay, what else? Oh, we need a rag, right, to dip on. And these are the paints I'm using. This is the Arteza 36 Watercolor Premium. Now, I don't even know if they sell these anymore, quite honestly. I really, really enjoyed them. A few years ago, I they had contacted me and we collaborated together where they gave me, graciously gave me this watercolor set to try out and I absolutely love it. I use it all the time. So, okay, I think that's everything. <sighs> I'll have everything listed below. First things first though, I, I started making this card front and I thought, well, it's so simple. Let me just bring you along. Again, disclaimer, I don't know anything about watercolor, you know? I do know that the paint does make a difference. Um, I do know that watercolor paper makes a difference. Can you watercolor on copy paper? Yes, you can. You can, it just, the water, the watercolor, the pigment won't spread as well and all that, but you can certainly do it. I paint on envelopes all the time. Uh, let's see what else. I don't know. If you have any more questions, then let me know down below. But I wanna show you a few simple strokes in order to get 
the result like that, okay? So I have a, just a spare piece right here. And I'm gonna try to walk you along. Now, I scroll a lot through um, Instagram and I find, of course there are a lot of videos on watercolor if you, you know, go through YouTube, plenty, plenty, where you can speed it up or slow it down or whatever to, to figure it out. I do the technique called wet on dry, okay? Meaning my paper is dry. Again, I, I don't know what I'm really talking about, but I, I think this is how you say it. I'm working on dry paper with a wet brush, okay? Again, this is a number three. I seem to have lost my number four, but that's okay. All right, one simple stroke, that's it, okay? So we watered up our brush, right? We're gonna put it into, let's get a little bit more water on it. Get it into the paint, okay? Now, for these little things, I don't want my paintbrush too sopping wet, so I'm gonna just dab it onto my rag, all right? And what I do is, I'll just show you, okay? I take it from the tip and then mush it, okay? So I hope you can see this. From, from the tip and just mush it and lift it back up. Okay, there's a petal. Okay, there's a petal. And then I go right back to the center. I squish it down and I lift it up squish it down and lift it up and there are th the three okay I know it's very light so let's try to do a darker one okay now I just wet my you know I just dipped it in the paint and there's a lot of paint on there I'm just gonna dab it on my rag right there okay and then we're just gonna go whoops and make three more. They don't have to be perfect, right? They do not have to be perfect. That is the beauty of it, right? So we're really just making three little teardrops is what we're making. That's it. That's it. One of the cool things about doing this also is that once they dry, Let's go in with some purple, okay? Now my brush is very wet. I'm going to take that excess off. Um, once they're dry, you can actually go right over top, okay? Now I'm gonna get a little bit more paint on that because that's super light. And we're gonna do this again, just maybe so you can see it a little better. Do we go like that? like that, right over the top of it, and you can layer up your colors, okay? And it also, the lighter color in the back gives it a little bit more depth, I suppose. And you can move your paper if you want, or simply your brush, and it's just very organic. You just put the tip in the center and push your brush down, okay? If you do it like that, right? If you do it like that, then you get a little bit more sort of like organic look, if you will. Because again, flowers aren't perfect, you know? So we're just gonna continue doing that all over, okay? All over. I might need to, I've started out with purple here. Maybe I'll just go in with the blue. I don't want my paintbrush super wet like that I don't want that and you can just as easily lift up the paint just so you know you can lift up the paint by doing that ah we'll fix that that's also a pretty technique too pretty cool technique what I'm doing right here is lifting the color back up once you put it down and it's too much right Anyway, let's get a little bit more water. I'm terrible at teaching this kind of thing. That's why I usually leave this to the professionals, but I just wanna let you guys know that you certainly don't have to be a professional <laughs> in order to do this, right? It is super easy to do. See, there, you can't even tell that I made a boo-boo. Okay, so we're gonna get some more. 
and this is just random. I'm just putting them in random areas. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I don't know. Let's try to bring you in. Don't know if this is gonna work or not. Try to bring you in a little more closely. Okay, let's see if that'll be okay. All right, we're dipping in the brush and I'm taking the excess water off. Otherwise, if you don't take the excess water off, can you see that? Can you see how I'm doing it? I don't know. Let me see if I can stand up and do it. Dipping it in water and then I'm taking this right up here and taking off the excess. Okay. I'm kind of holding the brush almost straight up and down. We go right to the center and then we just lay the brush down and pick it back up again. Okay. Like that. That's it. I mean, it really, really doesn't get any more simple than that. Okay. Some are darker, some are lighter, which is perfectly fine. The more water you add to your brush and dip it off, like, let's see. Okay, I just took, there was blue paint on here. I put it in my water and now look how light that is. It's, if you can even see it. <laughs> can you see what I just did there? Where was it? Up here? Yeah, that one, see? So some are lighter, some are darker, right? Now you can dry your brush off and oh, let's go into something a little more darker, a little more dark, sorry. And we're gonna go right, oh, look at that. You can make big ones, you can make little ones. And these are like more organic looking because they're not, my brush is, just kind of splaying out. It's not, whoa, okay. And I'm using, I'm just moving, moving my brush around, okay? Right? And you just keep on doing it. I find these to be very fun and quite relaxing. And they do dry fairly quickly, so um, you know, you're not like kind of in danger of making a huge mess, <laughs> you know, like a big puddle of a mess. Less water, in my opinion, less water uh, gives you a better, a better result, okay? And we're just layering here. I'm using a variety of shades of purple and blue and just layering it all up. Now, I don't know, some of you guys that know what flowers look like or something like that, um, you can tell me what this look like. looks like. I have no clue. Um, that's one of the reasons I chose to come on here and show you kind of how I do it, only because, um, yeah, I don't know what, this isn't any kind of, particular flower that that I'm aware of so a little bit of depth in here okay I think that's I think that's fine for our purposes for our purposes but it's super duper simple now I'm going to show you while this is drying okay now I'm going to show you how to do um sorry good grief I hope that was in frame oh this might turn out to not even air Okay, <clears throat> I'm wetting my brush and let me just look in the thing. Okay, I can do it right here. To do a leaf, it's the same, it's almost the same thing, only we're going to put the tip down and squish it down and then bring it back up, okay? It's kind of like a brush lettering, which I have no idea how to do that, by the way. I would love to learn, but I'm too impatient. Okay, so I just dipped my brush in some kind of green. Uh, in my palette, it's fern green. Okay, I'm taking the excess water out. Okay, and let's just do a stem first, okay? So we just very lightly touch the tip of our brush. Right, okay. I still have 
um, paint on here. So we're just gonna almost like straight up and down, almost, right? And with the very tip of our brush, we're gonna just make a, that a little stem, right? Now we put the tip down and then we press all the way down, splaying those bristles out and then we lift it back up and there's your leaf, okay? It really is as simple as that. It really, really is, okay? Now, if you wanna go back, you could put, you know, a vein in here if you want, whatever. I don't really like doing that. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna spread that out, see? You can easily fix your mistakes in watercolor, okay? I don't like that either, so I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so let's see, let's try that again. I'll try it with a different color. Let me just make sure I'm still in frame. There you go. Okay, I mean, typically speaking on a stem, the leaves aren't gonna be right next to each other, you know? Um, so we're gonna make a little stem, right? I can turn my paper if I want. And then we start, I know it's hard to see because my brush is right in the middle of it, but we squish it down, splaying those, those bristles and then bring it right back up again. Okay. You can go over it. You could do it however, however you want. Let's just um, have a little bit more color on there so I can see this is pretty much a dry brush now. My little stem, squish it down, bring it back up to a point. Okay, like that. Very easy, very easy. Okay, now we're gonna go into this, okay? And I'll first show you close up and then I'll just back it up some, okay? I'm drying off my, sorry about my hand, I'm drying off on this. All right, now we're gonna take, this is just a damp brush, okay? We're gonna take it and we're gonna put it in some of our green. We like to leave a point, right? And see how these flowers right here have a natural point to them, okay? So we can take our green and just go right, right underneath that point. You know how a flower, I don't know what the part of the flower is called, but there's like a little bit of green under there. Okay, but this is, this is very, it's just very easy to do. So if you're having a nice relaxing weekend and you just wanna do some kind of like free form, like little Vs, we're putting little Vs, all right? Little free form uh, watercolor. They just make fantastic cards and I think it's fabulous uh, to have, you know, to get and to receive. Ooh, that's a little dark. Let me rinse that off a little bit. I think it's just fun to receive a hand-painted card, right? All right, so I put my little Vs in and that's all we're doing, just to add a little bit of green greenery in here, okay? And then see how they're in here. There's some white spaces, right? We're just gonna put thin, th the thinnest little line. We're gonna get our paintbrush to a point, sorry. Okay, and then we can just do thin, thin little lines through. Oh, if you've missed any <laughs> of your doesn't even matter if they're coming through from a flower or not. It really doesn't. Not gonna matter. But we're just, this just a little bit more, you know, dimension, I suppose you could say. A little more dimension to 
to your little bouquet. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to bring these down. Let me just zoom you out now. Hopefully. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to zoom you out. All right. So I'm going to get a little bit more water. I'm going to dry it off on my brush. Dip it into my green. I roll it around. So if you can't see that. I take it and I roll it like that. And then that gives me a nice point. Okay. So oh, there's another one that needs a line. Okay. And you can just, you can add to these. You can put more than one, you know, whatever. Doesn't matter, really. You can add some to the stock. Right? So there's some coming, you know, all over. All right. And then we're just going to drag this. That's how, how I like to do it. I just take it and drag it, okay? Make a nice thin little stem, all right? Now I'm dipping it in the paint again, rolling it around, taking off some of the excess, and we're gonna go and make a thin little stem off the side, smush it down, bring it back up, okay? Now I want that a little bit darker, so I'm going to add more paint. I make it darker by adding more paint to my brush and actually dabbing it off. And I'm not trying to dab the color off, I'm just trying to get the color to be a little bit more uh, dark, a little darker, okay? So there we go, there you have it. And then we could even, for a little bit more dimension, you can put a, a different color in and just drag that along. And there, that's nice and dark. Okay. And we can just add a little bit more up here. Okay, and that's it. That's it. That's how it's done. That's how I do it anyway. And then you can, of course, put your sentiment over here. You can add more onto this, make it more bushy, whatever. Um, yeah, but it's those, it's just these simple strokes. It's putting your paintbrush down at the point and then just smushing it. Let's scoot that aside. And of course, you can do it with any color. But yeah, you just put it down and then squish it and it makes a little a little dew drop, right? Okay. You go you can go lightest to darkest and then that gives you the ability to um, add a little bit more dimension, you know. The more water, the lighter it's going to be. The less water and more pigment, the darker it's going to be. Okay? So, I hope that helped you out. I'm not sure if it did or not. <laughs> But I've had so much fun making these. And again, I wish I had the original, but I don't because it's in the mail. Um, but yeah, and then you just write your little happy birthday sentiment or thank you sentiment or whatever. And Bob's your uncle, you know, it's it's something that is just really easy to do. Um, let me just tell you as well, if you don't have watercolors, all right, let's do a little test while we're here. Okay, this is watercolors. Okay, that's watercolors. This right here, those are my daubers, okay? So, I'm just gonna turn this over. All right, and I have my rag right here, so I'm drying it off. Here are the daubers, all right? Not watercolors, these are not watercolors, Okay, so I'm adding some water to them. I'm gonna dip it on there and let's see how this goes. I don't know. <laughs> Look at that. Yep, okay. And then here, this is some green, so we'll see. And 
and then we're just gonna make the tiniest little there you go so I mean so simple you just add to it you know you play around that's that's my thing is that you just play around and see what works you know what works for you again even with even with these the dauber inks you know you just add water to them that's all that's all and then you can so in other words you can still paint you can still paint with these now will they will they um am i in frame let's see here will they spread out kind of like uh like watercolors probably not but if you're in a pinch i mean come on Again, I have no idea what I'm doing, okay? Just so you know. I'm just giving you a few ideas in case you're interested in, you know, trying out something. Ooh, they do bleed. Okay, that's interesting. So they, they're acting very much like a watercolor. Ooh, that's pretty, huh? Yeah very loose little watercolor using not watercolors, you know, using, um, the, the daubers. Okay. Now let's just try something. I know this is going on long enough, but you know, y'all know me once, once I get on a tangent, it's just, uh, I don't know how to stop. Okay. Now, one of the things that one of you guys taught me is if I can find a blank one, please forgive me. Okay. So that you can see this better. All right. You can see that a little bit better. Let's try this, shall we? Let's get my markers out here and let's do, let's just not even, we're just going to still go with pink. Okay. These are Crayola markers. Okay, if you don't have watercolors, if you don't have the ability to spend money on watercolors, okay? This is a plastic sheet. I'm just squishing some stuff around. All right, let's get this over here. Let's get our brush out, okay? There we go. Let's see here. I hope I'm in frame. Dip that down a little bit more. That looks just wonky, hmm? Oh well, that's okay, no biggie. Okay, now we're gonna get some yellow on here. And these do, this, I'm sorry, I hope I'm in frame. This doesn't really, yeah, I'm not a fan of this at all. I like the daubers better, but that's okay. I do like this, that little line at the bottom there. That's pretty, huh? All right, let's see here. Let's see if we can, what we can do. No, this isn't really, I, I think you would have to probably dry it real quick. Let me just do that real fast. Hoping to not melt the plastic underneath. The daubers work fantastic, just so you know, if that's something you'd like to do. Okay, let's get this. Let's see what this will do once it's dry. Okay, all right. So once it's dry, you can layer it. Yep, you most certainly can. And we're gonna just do that, add a little bit more water. And let's bring some of these around. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. Can you tell? Oh, we need green for a stem. Okay, so we'll, whoops, color out some green 
roll our paintbrush in that. These are just water-based markers, okay? Add some green along the bottom here. Make our little stem. Get some more green on our brush. Flatten, bring up to a point. Okay, that didn't turn out too terrible. Too terrible. It's all about play, okay? And having, having fun, all right? Have fun with your supplies. Have lots of fun with your supplies. And the only way that you're really gonna, you know, learn how to do any of this, which obviously, again, I am no professional, you can tell, but they're still pretty, you know? And anybody would love to have that on a card, you know, a handmade card. So anyway, there are just some, a few ideas for you. Again, 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 I am not a watercolorist. I like to play. I love to learn new things. Um, I like to experiment with, it uh, doesn't matter, with, you know, with the things that I do make or I like to experiment with the stuff that I have so that I can share with you that you, you know, if you have watercolors, great. If you don't, there are other alternatives that you can use, such as the ink daubers, such as just regular water-based markers. That's all you need. That and a few paintbrushes. And the paintbrushes, um, they, I'm sure you can get them at Dollar Tree, right? Let me just show you too on this. Maybe I'll just turn it, turn it over here. The fatter the water brush, right? Obviously, I mean, or maybe not. So if you, if no one, if you guys haven't done this before, then, you know, then I get it. Um, then it's not obvious. You know what I mean? The fatter the paintbrush, the bigger the mark is going to make. Okay. So we can go like that, like that, like that. And it would make a bigger flower, right? If we use the green, okay get some green on there bigger the bigger the brush tip the fatter the leaf is okay right and that's all it is just the motion of putting it down smushing it and bringing it back up okay you could do the same thing with the petals as well but this I just dab it to make like a what shape is that like a, this, um, like that, like a, almost like a dew drop, see? And then you do a bunch of those, that came out pretty. <laughs> I like the way that that one came out. You do a bunch of them, you let them dry in between, and then you layer them all up, and then you, then you get this kind of effect, so. I hope you enjoyed that. All right, now I'm really going. I know, oh gosh. Yeah, teaching used to be my profession, believe it or not. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm, I'm better at like language arts and stuff. So anyway, creative writing. Anywho, I hope you learned something from this. I hope you got an idea. There are many ways that you can accomplish what you set out to accomplish, okay? So I hope I've inspired you in some way. I hope I've shown you that. Let me tell you, if I can do it, you can do it too, okay? You can do it too. And practice, you know, practice, practice, practice. Uh, go on Instagram and, and things like that and look for... Um, inspiration, you know, and then see if you can then recreate that, right? And, uh, or come up with something on your own, you, you know, using just a few simple strokes, right? There are a lot of professional watercolorists out there. I suggest you look to them to, you know, really learn how to do something. But this is just a very simplified, very simplified way of doing a quick watercolor for a card or your journal or a tag or whatever, whatever you want. So it, with a myriad of, you know, supplies, you don't have to have all the best of everything. You don't have to have specific supplies. 
you can use a Crayola marker and water and it works just the same. So thank you again. Thank you for sharing your time with me. I hope y'all have a great weekend. I hope you have a relaxing weekend. I hope you're able to go into your room and paint some flowers, whatever these things are called. I have no idea. They just came from my little brain. So have fun, enjoy yourselves, and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye for now.